Okay, welcome. So we are looking at the battlefield right after the deployment phase has finished for a 2,500 point game of my vampire counts versus... My tomb kings. And uh, we're trying to prepare for the conflict. We're hoping that these lists will work out, so uh, we're trying them out using the deployment uh, plans that we would have put into place. You'll notice there's not a lot of terrain in there. This is um, a uh, standard battle. It's just yep. a pitch battle. Yep. Just a basic uh, battle line yep. scenario. And we both went in um, with a plan of how we were going to deploy before the game even started. And I think we both stuck with it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we'll take turns going through and describing what that plan was and explaining a little bit about why we decided upon that and how we think it's going to play out in the game. Right, and you might even find some things that are specific to the fact that we are playing one another um, as well, which will make it interesting. Yep. So I'm going to start off talking about these dire wolves here, and I deployed them actually last. Um in my whole army, which uh, was because I was waiting for the Necropolis Knights to go down. I knew there wasn't much my army could do to deal with them, so I figured the Dire Wolves would at least be able to hold them up for a turn or two, and that was my thinking. Get them across there and then uh, stick them in the way, essentially. So next up are my three main infantry blocks, all sort of in a nice battle line here. Got a horde of Crypt Ghouls with a level 1 vampire joining them. Uh, next to that in the center is my unit of Grave Guard, accompanied by the White King BSB. I uh, made sure that his banner was within 12 inches of any of my units that I was expecting to get into combat. And on the other side is my big ol' unit of Skeletons, joined by my Vampire Lord and the Necromancer. And so the idea with my army is that the units need to be near each other to support one another as I'm fighting. And hopefully I'm only going to have one unit in combat at a time. Uh, if things uh, go poorly, the BSB can help me by making me crumble a little bit less. Uh, if the vampire level one on foot is not in combat, then she can use the Helm of Commandment to pass her weapon skill on. And um, the wizards are all nearby to help replenish wounds. Then behind my main combat blocks, you'll see the black coach is behind the ghouls, the vampire on the hellsteed, the flying horse, is behind the graveguard, and that building <laughs> behind the skeletons is actually my terrorgeist. So the thought process there is that two of those models can fly, and the black coach should gain the ability to fly somewhere in the second or third turn of the game. And those models are all vulnerable. If they get charged, they're probably going to be taken off in one or maybe two rounds of combat, and I don't want that to happen. Uh, so I was going to sit them back a little bit further to protect them for the first few turns until I could fly them out into a better position. I've also got a unit of 20 zombies, and I threw them down pretty early on the one flank. Again, the idea that if something comes across the table that I'm not ready to deal with yet, I'm just going to throw the zombies in there and tie them up for a turn or two buy me that extra time I need because again with my three main combat blocks I only want one of those to be fighting um, at any given time so that I can support them with all my different tricks of the trade as it were and then behind this building off to the right here next to the zombies I put down my three fell bats and I threw them down there as my first deployment just so I wasn't giving too much of my hand away early and the idea was if they're behind the building, they can't get shot on the first turn because line of sight is probably going to be blocked. And if it's not, the unit of archers is going to be too far away. So that was my plan. I'm going to move up and, again, try and engage in combat with one big block at a time and hope that things go my way. How about you, Jen? Well, what you'll see here, first of all, is I'm very proud of this, is uh, my unit of skeleton light horsemen I put in a conga line. They can scout and they are fast cavalry, um, and they are across from your dire wolves, yep. and I put them there kind of as the answer to you're hoping uh, to deal with the snakes using them, and I'm hoping to make you go off the board. <laughs> that um, was very annoying. And then if I go <laughs> off, and, and if I get the first turn, 
I simply free reform and I can shoot. And if I can take off two of the wolves, um, things will be much better for me. But, you know, one or two can make it so much better and then it's much easier to beat. Um, I could pro perhaps even charge in the skeletons eventually. Um, and what you have here is my four necropolis knights with full command. And they also have a necrotect in them, which is great because it gives them hatred. And it ensures that they're in range uh, for a 6 of regen that the Necrotech gives to um, undead constructs. And uh, they are my very powerful units, so they're on the flank to jump up and hopefully push their way along. Uh, back, Way back you'll see um, the Screaming Skull Catapult. I put this down over here because I knew it was nowhere near your bats, uh, yep. which could be one of the only things that might actually get to them. Get to it, and I put it way far back in hopes that... Um, what you had wouldn't be able to get to it in a timely manner. Uh, you see my bunker of archers for my higher font. In front of that is the higher titan who gives out his plus d3. So I put him in range of both of my lich priests, the other one being in this unit of skeletons uh, right there. He can also protect your archers because he's pretty good in combat. True, true. So he serves a couple of purposes. And my BSB was also in that uh, unit of skeletons. I have another unit of skeletons with the Tomb King, and I purposely didn't put the BSB in that unit because I did not want the wounds to be allocated on him, as is what happens uh, with the Tomb King, because it's kind of like his personal guard. Here you see uh, the Necrosphinx. He's ready to up, get up and at him and fly into battle because he is very powerful. And behind that is my Casket of Souls. Again, way far back in hopes that if you get to it, it will... Uh, take a long time and over to the side here I have my two tomb scorpions um, so that I'll remember to roll to see if they come up because if they're off to the side I'll probably forget <laughs> <laughs> good point so, so there you have it let's see how it goes <laughs> 